morning, everyone. Welcome to episode number 54 of the Project 2020 show. It is Friday of week number 17. And to close us out, it's going to be Jacob Rochester with his Dwight Gooden and Don C with his Bob Gibson. We're also just a couple of hours away from the ending buying window for Frank Thomas and Cal Ripken and the cards from yesterday. Sandy Koufax and Tony Gwynn are an incredible experiment for this show. All of that and more in one quick second. Welcome back to my channel and thank you for clicking on that thumbnail. My name is Chris and if you want to connect with me outside this video, I'm on Twitter and Instagram at CRT underscore sports cards and the website is CRTSportsCards.com. But let's get to it. What happened yesterday in Project 2020? We had the print run announcements on the Andrew Thiel, Ted Williams, and the F. Derek Jeter. On the Ted Williams by Andrew Thiel, it came in as expected, right in that sweet spot. I said four to 5,000, but not 5.1. It came in at 4,404. So very nice to see that card come in right in the middle. Our third card of the four that have been released so far that are in that 4,000 range. So when you think back to our show from yesterday, when I was m making the point of are all these cards the same, right now they kind of are because the one card that did not fall in the 4,000 range was that Derek Jeter. And it was hilarious on the Derek Jeter. After I posted the video, as it was processing, I saw the print run come in. And let's take a look. Let's roll that tape on what I said about the Derek Jeter yesterday. I could easily see this card coming in in the eight to 9,000 range, but I don't think that's very likely. The numbers tell me that, but the emotion, which is probably wrong here, tells me it's not gonna do that. So 10 to 12,000, I'm sticking with Jeter. So the Jeter was a miss. I had 10 to 12, it came in eight to nine. If you had me on the video with the Jeter, you win, but you wouldn't have had it because it was posted after the print run was announced. When you think of the Jeter, this one to me was, was very interesting. When you think back to where cards have come from in the set to where they're going. And, and a majority of the first player and second player cards are the lowest printed cards of a player. It's very rare to have a card later or printed later, especially right now, and be lower. So when you think of Jeter, you know, his first two cards were like 93, 9,500. So I really felt that was his floor, regardless of the grotesque. The grotesque is the lowest printed artist and his, he was at 6511. I didn't see it getting that low, but I was just very surprised that even with the giveaways, that it did not get over 10,000. But the numbers were correct, eight to 9,000. The eBay penetration was 1.34%, which is kind of what you'd expect to see on a higher printed card like this. The Andrew Theo came in at 1.61. So kind of, both numbers kind of upticking a little bit, but not over 2%. Also, as we go throughout the weekend, if you wanna stay connected with me and, and get all the news and notes, please hit that subscribe button because we have a lot of content over the weekend. And then of course we have week 18 coming next on Monday. But now looking at the cards for this morning, the Cal Ripken and the Frank Thomas. And last night at 11 o'clock, I did make a pre-order projection change, but all I did was lower the Cal Ripken. And as I said on the video yesterday, even though Frank Thomas was the lowest pre-ordered card at the time, I didn't think he would sell less than the Cal Ripken. And now I'm sticking with it from a, from a pre-order projection. So on the Frank Thomas, I'm sticking with 4.5 to 5.5. The pre-orders after 48 hours came in at 88. I had a goal or target of 85. So I think it's still very solidly 4.5 to 5.5. Anything over five right now though feels very high. So I think we're gonna see a high four number on the Frank Thomas. On the Ripken though, people left this card. After one day, that card had 60 pre-orders. Yesterday, they only added 17. I have never seen a card only add 20% of their pre-orders on the second day. That was a very, very low number. So it tells me that that card is gonna be lower right around the 4,000 to 4,500 range. So I dropped that range from 4,000 to 5,000, but not 5.1. I can't see getting over five, but I do like the Ripken Old Man Allen being the second card of the day, right behind the Frank Thomas. And then here again, if both of these cards print in the 4,000s, it goes back to my point yesterday, are all these cards the same? We're gonna find out, but I think both of these cards finish in the 4,000 range. 
in the next couple of hours. Okay, so let's hit the hardwood floor now. Let's get to this Bob Gibson by Don C. If there's one thing Don C does, he makes us think and he makes us do our research in these cards. It's not as simple as looking at a card and saying, oh, it's great colors and moving on. You have to know the player and or the situation to really understand these cards. And this Bob Gibson is another fantastic card from Don C. Let's take a look at that this card, Don C and then Gibson all together. So here's Bob Gibson. It is a basketball because before he was a baseball player, he was a basketball player and obviously I think was really, really good at basketball. Now this is Don C's sixth card and I think it's critical to go through these cards one by one and kind of explain what they mean, at least to me as a fan of what I've read online. Now Frank Thomas is gold because he went to Auburn. So AU is gold. Cal Ripken, he is the Iron Man for his game's play streak. That is why that card is iron. Griffey here to me is what I'm questioning the most. It, maybe it's the Marine for Mariners. I don't know, but that one's still in question. The Willie May says it's the I can't breathe reference. And then Ted Williams is because he was a fighter pilot in the war and he was up in the sky. So that makes a lot of sense. And then you add Gibson here being a basketball player. And then when you look at Bob Gibson overall, this is his ninth card. He has some of the best looking cards. I called them iconic yesterday. We have the Keith Shore. We have JK5's first color card. And you have the Ermsey, which I think is just fantastic. His highest printed card is that Ermsey at 14,867. And his lowest card is Grotesque at 1,205. I am though very curious, what are your favorite Don C and Jacob Rochester cards to this moment? Leave a comment below or hit me up on Twitter or Instagram with your favorites. Me, I know me personally on Don C, I don't have a favorite. I haven't purchased any of his cards outside of the ones I did pre-orders on. And then on Bob Gibson, there's a couple cards I like for a couple of different reasons. From a collector perspective, it is that grotesque card because that was the first card I purchased from a collector mindset and it kind of set me off picking up grotesque cards, natural cards. So that kind of is a moment card for me. But then on the visual side, I think it's 1A and 1B. It's the Tyson Beck and the Ermsey. I like both those cards for different reasons, but I think from a visual perspective, those two are the best cards for Bob Gibson at the moment. And now let's shift our focus over to the market and see where the dollars fell yesterday. And I will say, I'm really starting to fall in love with the Forgotten 7 cards to really track those and see how they do. I'm, I'm not gonna stop doing first and second player cards, but I like how small this sample is because we can really dig into the weeds and look at all the numbers and it's not 40 cards, but we'll continue to do first player, second player, and then the Forgotten 7. But let's look at those charts real quick. Five of the seven cards sold yesterday. Willie Mays up 12%, George Brett up 16%. The only one that was down was Roberto Clemente, and that one is still up over where it was from 7.7 7 to 7.13. So tremendous growth in all of these cards. Looking at first player cards, it was interesting last night to see when you look at 7.14 to 7.15, how many cards were down, but then there was a lot of green yesterday. Ichiro, $1,800. Jackie Robinson, that auction ended during our show yesterday, 504. And then taking a look at second player cards. This one was surprising from the other's perspective here. From 714 to 715, look at how many cards were positive versus 7-7 to 713. Now, some of them, of course, came down yesterday. A lot of them didn't even sell. It still goes back to the thought process of if the first player cards get out of control, and I mean that from a high dollar perspective, are we going to start seeing more people go back to second player cards just because those are a little bit lower of a price point and they're more more within the budget of more collectors than say a 500 600 card we'll see what happens over the weekend as we spoke about on yesterday's show who's going to flinch first is it going to be the buyers or the sellers i still think we're going to see a very strong buying weekend because i don't see a reason right now for the sellers to come down because all of the movement has been basically positive up to right now now let's shift our focus over to the second card of the day and what I feel is the best card of the Friday pairing, which is this Dwight Gooden, Jacob Rochester. And I think it's because it feels darker to me. It feels like bold. On Twitter, I called it Jacob Rochester found the bold in this photo. I just really, really like how it stands out overall compared to his other cards. But let's take a look at his library at the moment. So this is Jacob Rochester's ninth card overall. I don't know if anyone really has a favorite Rochester card. They're all kind of similar to a degree. And this is why I like the Gooden, the Gooden so much more. Because to me it feels darker than the rest. 
But from a print run perspective, the Mike Trout is his highest at 33.818, and his lowest card is card number two, which is the Sandy Koufax at 1135. And then taking a look at Dwight Gooden here, this is also his ninth card. He had the most recent card with the F dot, with the mask, the moment card as I call it. His highest printed card right now is the Ben Baller at 25928. And he has the, the two lowest print run cards, the lowest being the Tyson Beckett 1065. Now on my favorites on Jacob Rochester, I don't really have a favorite. I guess if I had to pick one to keep, Right now, it's Griffey. I'll, I really want to see his Ichiro, but at the moment, it, there's not really a favorite. Now, on the Dwight Gooden, I really like the grotesque card, the triangle, but to me, it's going to be the F dot mass card just because we can look back on this card in 15, 20, 30 years and know when this card was printed and why it was made. Now, it's time to go to science class and it's time to test out a theory and to have a major experiment on a print run. And this goes out to everyone who says that this show can move a needle in a print run based on my pre-order announcements and my print run projections. But first, we're gonna talk about the Tony Gwynn by Ermsey. That card came in last night at 65 pre-orders, very similar to where every card has landed so far this week, outside of the Jeter in a sense. So right now on a print run range, I'm looking at 4.5 to 5.5. I just think that range is just gonna get pounded again with these cards and we're just gonna have so many cards in that range by the time we get through this time period of Project 2020. But now let's talk about the Sandy Koufax by Keith Shore. We thought the Don Mattingly had low pre-orders. The Keith Shore has even lower pre-orders after 24 hours. The Sandy Koufax only has 23 pre-orders at the moment. When you take a look at the eBay penetration averages right now, when you think back to yesterday, 1.6, and we, we, we've seen 1.6 a couple times here recently. If the Sandy Koufax just picks up 10 more reserves today and ends up at 35, at a 1.6 eBay penetration, this card is barely printing at 2,150. And to get to 4,000 cards printed with just 35 pre-orders, you have to get to 0.88% eBay penetration, and to get to 5,000 on the dot, that's 0.7. You know who puts up those kind of numbers? Ben Baller. And last time I checked, Keith Shore is not Ben Baller. So this card is going to be low, but this tests the big theory. Is this card still gonna print low? Everything tells us it will right now. Everything says it's gonna be lower than the Nolan Ryan, Jacob Rochester. We'll find out, is everyone going to run to tops right now and buy 510 and get this back over, up over 4,000? We are gonna find out. This is gonna be a fantastic experiment to see, does this show move a needle or does this card print under 3,000? Because everything tells us right now, this card should be under 3,000 with just 23 pre-orders and a 1.6% eBay penetration but we're gonna find out, we're gonna see, stay tuned. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And at the same time, if you want more news and notes from me about week 17, please check out that playlist on the screen right now.